That was nice. Yeah. And one of the things that I'm, I'm kind of curious that I guess almost wanted to ask you is this the idea of like scale. I don't mean this like in music. Say I, I mean in like the sort of the the difference. I mean maybe for me perceptually the juxtaposition between the sort of the instruments they use, mm -hmm. the volume of them, yeah. but then let's say like the the size of the gesture or the sort of the complexity of the gesture as such. Yeah. Yeah. You mean how does that work in my playing? Yeah, or like how you think about this. Yeah. Um, in terms of big gestures, I think I tend to, I try and think formally. I try and think in blocks. I tend to think in blocks. Mm -hmm. Um, so that, so that in terms of like making those structures, um, I'll create like a particular kind of set of like three or four elements that interact in certain ways and can kind of change. Mm -hmm. And then I'll tend to drop that and move on to something else. Sometimes there'll be an organic development, but sometimes there's just a kind of something finishes and then I start it up again. So like those are like the biggest gestures that I make like over a whole performance, mm -hmm. like repeating different types of similar ideas. And then at like a micro level, um, I think similarly in like little cells a lot of the time, little cells that kind of either like latch on to what you're doing or give you like a platform to go on top of. Mm. Um, so I think of them organized in, in that way as little as lots of little cells all kind of together, lots of little musical ideas that kind of start up and usually just then conclude or fall apart or just stop. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the, the reason I'm kind of asking is because I, I feel like there's, um, I feel like we have a, almost a, a similar language in terms of the underlining, like, mechanisms happening, like, right. formally and also, like, micro gesture wise, mm -hmm. but, like, radically different sound worlds. Okay. I mean, here they're closer because I got, like, I have some objects and, like, yeah. the, the overlap of sound worlds here, but, like, sounds that I, I, I sometimes use or, or more commonly use, but the, um, the gears feel similar, which is right, kind of interesting because okay. I very much like that the, the, that sort of blockish form or mm -hmm. consideration of gesture of sorry of form as a function of like improvisational gesture. Yeah, you know, which I think is not something that is often people like. I don't think that's at the forefront of most people when, it, when people think about, about improv. They're often thinking about immediacy and moments and like, like yeah. these are the kind of concerns, which obviously we're concerned with here as well. Mm -hmm. But like I, I personally like that sort of well for the one of the blocks, but also yeah. the like. The macro, like where yeah. those things unfold to, which is kind of interesting. Yeah, that really um, it really matters to me that I can that I can. I don't know why. I always I think actually in terms of the listener. Um, that I, that I kind of want psychologically or kind of emotionally to create a situation in which they've been through something that they didn't necessarily enjoy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They didn't necessarily it wouldn't be necessarily what they would gift themselves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's something that they but they've gone through something and then that they find it can be done either in a punishing way, in a kind of way that re intensifies the kind of stuckness of it, mm -hmm. or it can be done in a way that kind of concludes it and sort of puts an almost kind of fake ending on it. Mm -hmm. And I like doing it in both ways, just to return to something to do like a to do like a kind of cheap sonata form kind of thing, yeah, yeah. go back into it again and either give the audience the sensation of like, oh, for fuck's sake, I'm back, <laughs> like, like I'm back, like, st yeah. like I'm still stuck in here, mm -hmm. like Sisyphean kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Or, um, uh, or gives them the sense of like, oh, like it's resolved, but it's almost like, I don't know, like it's resolved, but it's, um, but like I say, it's like a false ending almost. Sometimes, mm. but like to bring, and they just like to bring it back round and to kind of, and to just leave it kind of, kind of half completed, sort of a bit ambiguous. Yeah, yeah, which I, which I think is like, um, good improv needn't be satisfying. You know, like I mm. think that's a, I mean, good music needn't be satisfying. It's like there's different things that we're listening for and different, um, you know, different vectors of, of communication yeah. happening um, between each other, obviously, and between like a listener. Um, I mean, how much of that do you think comes from, either is informed by um, like the choice of instrument in instruments that you have, or vice versa? Like, how much of these sound sources have informed that that mm -hmm. way of thinking, or, or inversely, you know, like, or is it un are they unrelated? I don't think I don't think they're unrelated. By the way, what I was saying before about that 
that stuff to do with planning out form and mm. to, I guess it, I was going to clarify that it applies more to like solo improvising I guess mm -hmm. than it does I wouldn't normally try and without talking to the other person enforce the structure around them mm. you know like like and now we're going to do the ending when they don't know what that is I just unilaterally <laughs> decide to do an ending but, but anyway um, I think I'm attracted to those types of cellular forms anyway um, but there's something sort of microscopic and small about the choices of sounds um, for the most part for the most part I, I don't have anything that can produce a low note the lowest I could get was sort of some t some microphone feedback out of that and mm. the little amp I could get like a low thing or I could get the low in this now <laughs> but other than that like everything I've got is right up in the yeah, yeah. top register and so for me that suggests also that it should be moving in the way that small things move you know I, in fast yeah, yeah. in fast kind of flowing movements or in strange twisting movements or in you know how spiders move with their legs all going yeah yeah these little cells of rhythm and movement yeah I, I, I very much agree and I very much like that kind of stuff although it's not unusual for people to have like high drone-ish material as well yeah. which you you purposefully don't yeah you know like and it's it's not that you can't with some of these instruments but like that's not mm. language that you you sort of tend towards no it isn't at all mm. no yeah i mean it's interesting like returning to like your your aciding back to your last aside of the sort of form in the context of group improvisation which is an interesting one in that like there's even in this group improvisation it was clear that we did uh, a formal thing happened and both of us were like okay yes mm -hmm. and kind of went with it yeah. and sometimes that didn't happen uh -huh. but I think there's like um, I kind of enjoy the navigation of those those uh, meta performative things mm -hmm. in the context of performance where I think like if you do force an ending I think that's kind of good as well mm -hmm. like like I think there's at two people it's different than like three people and four yeah. people right like there's a lot more flexibility that with two people in that like if you just decide to end then like I, I could kind of carry on and do a solo a bit and then mm -hmm. stop or something like where if it's in a if, if we were like five people and you just stopped yeah people would probably not even notice you no, know? Like, no, no, right. <laughs> so like it's hard to enforce form at, like at, at more than yeah. that amount of people with two I think you can get quite um it's not the the, the implication the connotation of, of, of uh, confrontational is not what I mean but mm -hmm. one can be confrontational with form mm -hmm. with two people yeah and then, like you can make brash decisions yeah in a way that I think can still be received welcomingly. Yeah, okay. You know, mm -hmm. um, in a way that I think, yeah, obviously doesn't necessarily scale up, but I think, um, yeah, I, I do like that idea. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, I think in, um, in bigger groups, even if it's just three, and one person steps up, there's less of the, like you say, the kind of one-on-one -on -one sort of yeah. conversation where like we're both adults, we can like kick <laughs> around ideas without having to worry mm. about upsetting each other. Mm. Whereas in the group of three, it's more of a group dynamic, and in that group, then if that, then there's a, then there's a split in the group, so that two people are being felt feel they're being sided against, and then mm. there's a unity between those two, and there's just much more opportunities for it to fracture and break down yeah. and become kind of authoritarian. Yeah. And, and I think even like outside of like a, a sort of a socio-political kind of connotation, there, there it's just harder to communicate some of those, the the machinery of that formal decision. Like I think we should all of a sudden start playing loud. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to communicate that by playing loud. Like that could just be like, oh, two people would be like, oh, he's playing loud for a yeah. moment. Whereas like for you, like it's clear that that's happened, and you can either meet it or not meet it. Mm -hmm. And but those are decisions you make then and there as yeah. part of the gesture. Whereas like with with the three people, that that doesn't. The legibility of that is somewhat lost. You yeah, know? yeah. Like things right. become a little bit more ambiguous. Yeah, not everything's being said like to you. Yeah, exactly. Everything's kind of being said to each other. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And to the audience, I suppose. It's well, like, you know, yeah. <laughs> F them. Yeah, you know them. But yeah, but it's weird that I do actually. I am actually focused quite a lot on the sort of phenomenological kind of effect of the music on the audience, mm. and this, and the effect that it has on me if I listen to it back or if I manage to split a bit of myself off to listen while I'm doing it. Um, that just um, to be able to to be able to um, shift perception, to be able to to be able to also to be able to always to be trying to dance on the edge of something that's turning into rubbish. Mm. 
so that it has logic or value or reason or love or whatever it has something like living in it um but then sometimes it start, it sort of drifts apart it stops working it becomes kind of dead and then it just sort of dissolves but I, I like to kind of try and carry on through that to put the audience in a position where they have to keep deciding over and over again whether there's anything to this or whether this is just rubbish mm. so they have to be kept being disappointed and then one back and disappointed and one back and I want to keep putting them in that position and <laughs> yeah well, I like that disappointment is part of the loop like you <laughs> yeah like this is like like watch how this can turn into shit yeah, yeah. and then can turn back into something yeah, else yeah. it's like a um, like the, I think there has to be the risk that it's going to turn into shit and I was consciously in that there were points when I was thinking I feel like I know what I'm doing too much here I feel mm. like I feel like we've become, become too much of a um, it's become too much of an act mm. so and that's when I started to do things that didn't really work such as like these sort yeah, of things yeah. that don't have that are really just a kind of a way of um, just opening up everything and making everything possible mm. even things that don't really have a function or don't work mm. but in a if there were an audience and if it was solo and when I start doing things like that and the attention is on me and I'm doing I stop doing what's working and instead do something that's very unlikely to work <laughs> and, and really try yeah. and get it going and stick to it and I think to myself I'm going for I'm going for like five six minutes on yeah. this on this section so I'm going to take my time with it and even though it keeps not working over and over I'm going to keep doing it and f force the audience to watch how close shit and gold are together <laughs> like and, like to to like to cr really cr really push them to really take them to mm. a place and the, a place that I like to go in, in myself yeah, yeah it's a I don't know I don't know it's um, a philosophical kind of thing I suppose and with, with like a little <laughs> mini aside on that one there like do you how do you because I'm always wary because there's certain things that are like returning to scale actually to put a sonata on, mm. on our conversation here <laughs> um, certain things like have a gravity to them so like like loudness if something being very loud it has meaning yeah. something very quiet has meaning something mm -hmm. very long has meaning like there's certain like extremities that carry amount of weight that i i tend to be personally i somewhat wary of like i i do very much agree with that I, mm -hmm. I love the like 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 the run-on sentence like where there's like a gesture and you're just like you're gonna stick to it and that that kind of almost always works like it's hard to like do something a hundred times and have it be bad almost mm -hmm. in like a Cajun way like think right. it becomes interesting yeah. like I don't know it's sort of like a little side question there of like scale like how do you how do you relate to like knowing that if, if you do that one thing for six minutes it's gonna it's gonna end up gold you know mm -hmm. like it, it's kind of mm -hmm. hard to like not have that happen like yeah. do you like it almost feels like that like if you did want the fragility or the fader there that the the scale would be one of the the least or like the least effective ways to get there, because if you did it really loud, it would work really well. If you did it really quiet, it mm -hmm. would work like like the sort of the, the extremes will generally pan out, you know. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, you can kind of hide in the sort of <laughs> grandiosity or the kind of delicacy of a gesture. Mm. Like that, and that <clears throat> happens a lot in improvised music, right? That it's just like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, like a, hero a, hero yeah, yeah, yeah. a heroic gesture or a tragic gesture. Mm. Um, and then also, like a very an extremely refined kind of Elizabethan sort of gesture. <laughs> um, and, there's a, and you can hide in that because it has social value. Yeah, yeah. Like, it's like everybody can look at that and think, ah, oh, yeah, I know what they're doing. They're doing mm. something that's valuable. Whereas I like to make it so that with me, then really they can't tell. I <laughs> can't tell if what I'm doing has value or not. Sometimes yeah, they yeah. think it does, and then other times they just think, "Well, this is just a load of bollocks. Mm. This is just either you know pretentious or uh, you know um, deluded or you know or just um, meaninglessly provocative." Yeah, yeah. But I like them to. I like to keep winning them over and losing them again, winning them over. I like that. Yeah. That keep, makes it like a living thing. Cool. Well, shall we? <laughs> shall we do it? Yeah. Cool. I'm so not a floor performer. Like it. Like I. I <laughs> I'm like adjusting. I'm like trying to find a comfy spot in it. <laughs>
I can't sit on a chair. Yeah. <laughs>